Hi, everybody. So I'm Arnold Laroche. I'm a partner at UI. Uh, formerly, I was a, a tech entrepreneur in AI. I had a company called Bluestone that I sold to UI now four years ago, so as to help UI accelerating on these uh, scientific and technological uh, questions and capabilities. So uh, my aim today is uh, to talk about, yes, how to leverage these technologies that are now uh, close to us and take the best of them with many questions behind the scene. First of all, and, and, and to begin, uh, I would just like to explain in a few words what is behind the scene when we are talking about AI. And to do so, uh, just saying that, what are we trying to do when we are using AI? In fact, we are trying to just mimic what we as human beings doing are doing through our cognitive, main cognitive functions. And if we want to summarize, I would say that we have six main cognitive functions. The very first one uh, here is our capacity to, to learn through time and to master skills and, and sometimes very complex skills. The second one is our ability to execute tasks, sometimes very complex tasks with both speed and accuracy. The third one is our ability to transfer knowledge to other people, mainly. The first one is the capacity we have as human beings to behave with empathy and capacity to adjust our, the way we operate regarding the audience we have. The, five, the fifth one is the capacity to engage naturally for example, through motion, physical engagement. And the last one, and not the least, is our ability to be original, to invent new things, to think differently in a different manner than what the others have done before. Once that's set, where is AI regarding these six dimensions? As of today, I would say that AI has reached at least the capacity to match and in some cases exceed human beings in two of these dimensions, the first two ones. The ability to learn and master skills and the ability to execute at speed and with accuracy. Regarding the other ones, AI is still struggling to mimic human beings and there is much progress to be done and especially for the last one, I mean the originality, the ability to create new things that have never been created before. When we think about art, for example, AI is used in art creation, but if you look precisely at what is created, in most cases, it really looks like things that have been created before in a different manner, but very close to this. No disruption real there. Once that said, how does it work? I would not do a long presentation of AI, but just put the scene on a major concept around AI, which is the ability to learn through machine learning, deep learning, using neural networks, which is not something new. How does it work? Just take an example. When you teach a kid uh, to recognize animals, cats and dogs, what don't you do? You don't, you never explain him what is a cat and what is a dog in all its dimensions, age, etc. This is not the way you are doing this. The way you are doing this is just showing cats, showing dogs, and labeling cats and dogs, saying this is a cat, this is a dog, this is a cat, this is a dog. And after a certain number of experiences, fortunately not too many, because it would take much time, a kid's brain is able to transform the information coming to him, images of cats and dogs, to another information, which is what you have said about the fact that it is a cat or a dog. So he is ingesting data and progressively is being able to label animals without being able to say and explain why it is a cat from a scientific description and why it is a dog. This is exactly the way, in most cases, AI is working. You feed it with data going through algorithms inspired from human brains, neural networks, layers of, net of, uh, of neurons, 
that transform the information coming in into a different information getting out to predict events, to analyze information. This is very useful to do uh, text analysis, uh, uh, knowledge extraction from large corpus of documents, uh, build artificial vision systems to perceive information and analyze it, uh, implement pattern recognition. Pattern recognition is very useful to identify common patterns. The fact that because you have done such and such actions, the probability that we'll buy such or such project product is high or low. Or on the other side, very rare events, abnormal situations coming, getting out of the normal patterns. Very useful to do fraud detection, predictive maintenance. Another field, of course, is interactive conversation, the ability to transform speech into text, text into speech, using the kind of algorithms described. Planning optimization and strategy building, building very complex strategies, for example, to win in a game, and why not to build a complex supply chain optimization system? And combining all this with robotics, would it be technical robots or software robots to automate very complex tasks? So it opens a, a, a new world of possibilities. Now, what is the current business maturity of adding this? First of all, uh, I think it's interesting to understand where we are and where we go through very few figures. Uh, last year, uh, we estimate that around 10% of government digital services were using bots to interact with citizens. These are not always very complex bots, but this is the reality. In 2020, uh, AI analytics research industry should concentrate around uh, six, 70 billion dollars of investment to be compared with eight billion dollars in 2013. And we see, we say, we hear sometimes that it could double economic growth from 2035, increase productivity by 40%. So it's huge. It's something huge that is happening. I will not present why it's happening. Just Regarding the maturity, we, we conducted a survey uh, along with Microsoft for Western Europe across uh, seven countries, 300 companies, uh, just to understand where they were and where they intended to go. Of course, all of them consider that it's very important. 70% of top management people consider it's important that that will change again. 90% um, um, around 90% consider that it will happen in the fields of operations. Surprisingly, more than in the field of customer interaction. But beyond that, it's also interesting to analyze the various maturities of companies across sectors. We divide maturity uh, between five categories. Those who are just aware of what is AI, to the ones who are really embedding AI in their DNA in all what they are doing. Designing their processes, designing their products, delivering their services, and in between, those who are just active, experimenting, prototyping. Those who have gone at scale on certain processes and those who have gone at scale quasi systematically on many processes. What you see that very few companies are just aware of it, which is a good thing. On the other side, very few are really transformational to AI and especially the tech companies. This is where the game is happening. And in between, 60% are just experimenting. And here you see the difficulty to go one step after, which is scaling. It takes about approximately six to 18 months to go from experimentation to concrete application in a given process. But to generalize and scale from one process to many different process accounts, the companies, it takes three to five years. And as of today, only 4% of the surveyed companies consider that they are applying AI through quasi systematically across various processes. And of course, it depends on the sectors. Take are on the right side. Here we have uh, scaling medium uh, AI adoption around retail, media, finance, and lower adopters are on the left there. One key problem is the scarcity of resources. We estimate there are, there are, there are only about 10,000 people across the world who are really where are they concentrated? 
in tech companies mainly and startups. Now, to make it happen, I would like to see four ma three main uh, things. The first one is think big. What we see in this survey is that many applications of AI are considered to do incremental innovation to get better on one or another process. And this is due to the fact that as human beings, we are resonating with human metrics. These human metrics are mainly linked to a, uh, oh, sorry, are mainly linked, yes, uh, to what we believe humans can do within a nerve cycle. What, how many uh, patients a uh, doctor can uh, visit in a day, how many uh, clients a uh, salesman can visit in a week, etc. But we feel we should completely think differently because of the capacity to achieve speed and accuracy at a completely different scale. AI, is, coupled with robotics, is able to solve a, a Rubik's Cube in one second. So, of course, once that said, you must think out of the box considering that everything is possible, which is not true. We see it just afterwards. But you should consider that everything is possible when doing iteration based on AI. Once that said, uh, you also have to build trust. And this for at least three reasons. The first one is that AI is no cure for all. There are some situations in which AI is not good. Here you have an example of a very simple game which is the Montezuma game. It's a game where you don't uh, uh, have any re rewards before the end of the game. At the end, you win or you lose, but in between, nothing happens regarding the rewards you get. It's a game which is based on concepts. Keys, doors, and keys are opening doors. And it's a game where you can lose very quickly. For AI, it's very difficult to learn how to, to win in that game. The challenge has been solved recently, I think it's three or four months ago, and it's still discussed whether it has really been uh, resolved by an AI developed by Uber. But it's very recent and it's a very simple game. Another example here around knowledge extraction. You have text coming from Wikipedia, very simple text. You could uh, answer the questions that are there uh, milliseconds. AI is doing right for three of these questions, wrong on two of them and really simple questions. Just to say that it can do many, many things, but you should not consider that it can do everything. And it has considerations around the way you manage your job management and their expectations. Second thing, AI can be misleading. It's highly, generally highly unapproachable. It can be tweaked. Here you have an example. It's an image where the AI is recognizing a panda. But if you apply a filter on top of this image, you will see a panda and the AI to a gibbon with a higher level of confidence. Here's another example, automatic translation, translating from English to Turkish and to English. In Turkish language, there is no genre. So if you try to translate, he's a, she's a doctor in Turkish, it is like this, I won't be able to, to pronounce it. But when you go back to English, she is a nurse, he is a doctor. Because the data that was used to learn is made of many situations where doctors are males and nurses are females. It raises a major question here around the governance of these kind of things. And specialists here, Gartner, estimate that 85% of wrong erroneous outcomes could come from AI due to these kind of problems. Last thing. Uh, I said 70% of top management are considering, this is uh, an outcome of the survey, that um, AI is a real driver for progress and, and can even in 50% of the, of the responses completely change the game and the business services, etc. When you discuss with uh, mid-management employees and below, you have exactly the same proportion, 70%, considering exactly the contrary. Why? Because they fear two things, to lose their jobs and to lose their privacy. And for us, it's a major problem. The cumulative effect of what we attend from your and top management and the level of confidence the companies, members of companies have in this can be disastrous. Which means what? That we as managers should not concentrate our efforts on AI on replacing human beings 
replacing jobs. We should concentrate on using, leveraging that technology to help them being doing smarter things. It's easy to say and put on slides, but it's a major question. Another one is we should trust collective intelligence as much as we trust artificial intelligence. There are many situations in which collective intelligence gets to better outcomes and predictions than artificial intelligence. This has been tested and proved. Outcomes of an election, outcomes of uh, the evolution of prices. Tech experts, many experts, take the outcomes of what they say and will certainly get better results than with AI. Which means that you have to build a framework for trust around AI. Ethics board, auditability of algorithms. You have to have the right resources around the table to build the AI projects. Last trick, you have to master innovation. My time is elapsed, so I won't go far. But three recommendations there. First one, you should concentrate your efforts investment on big bets. It's useless spreading investments in people, experimenting very different things. I know it's easy because there is curiosity there. You should identify your big bets from a top-down approach and from a bottom-up approach. Also considering the external drivers, what is happening on the market, what are the market trends, how is the technology evolving, and concentrate only on big bets, the ones that will transform your companies. Second thing is that you should mix skills. It's a question of science, it's a question of technology, but it's also a question of ethics, legal questions, people change management. And to do this, we would recommend building center of excellence around AI, mixing all these kind of skills to solve the problems. And finally, you should take care of industrialization. It's very easy to experiment, but going to scale have many impacts on people, technology, architectures, and it's not so easy. And that should be taken into account at the very beginning of any AI project as any other kind of innovation, technology innovation project. That was my general recommendations around AI based on what we see on projects we deliver and kind of discussions we have with top management companies. Thank you for your attention.